Well, thank you very much. I've got a lot of tough acts to follow there. Um, and I'm very grateful to have been invited to speak today about the, uh, the uh, humble uh, achievements of Heritage Watch in Cambodia. So I'm going to be talking about grassroots preservation in Cambodia. And um, of course, there's been a lot of shocking instances of heritage destruction in the news um, in the past few years. Uh, we heard this morning about the destruction of the Temple of Baal at Palmyra, um, the giant Buddhas at Bamiyan, of course, um, and uh, the museum destruction by ISIS uh, in Mosul. Um, I guess in the West, many of us wonder what could motivate such seemingly senseless uh, destruction. And I think that the examination of uh, Bamiyan is a good case in point. And of course, this site is famous for the massive standing uh, Buddhas that were carved into the cliff faces there in the 6th century AD. Um, the 2001 destruction of these was actually not the first attempt to demolish um, what were viewed as heretical images. In the 17th century, a Mughal emperor tried to destroy the Buddhas with cannon fire, um, and later a Persian king, uh, Nader Ashfar, um, tried again to destroy these images. Um, and in the 19th century, the faces were blasted off um, uh, one of the Buddhas at Bamiyan. And I think examining the reasons behind these attempted and successful uh, destructions indicates that they were either um, ethnically motivated or driven by fundamentalist doctrine. Um, the uh, Hazara people who inhabit the region around uh, Bamiyan believe that uh, one of these uh, attempted destructions was motivated by ethnic hatred because the Buddha had Hazra facial features. The um, earlier attempts at destruction and the last, unfortunately, uh, successful attempt were probably iconoclastic. Shortly after the destruction in 2001, uh, Mullah Muhammad Omar was quoted as saying, Muslims should be proud of smashing idols. It has given praise to God that we have destroyed them. Now, a third motivator is profit, in which heritage, of course, is not necessarily destroyed, but stolen, and this should be considered as well. In some cases, antiquities theft may be opportunistic, criminal exploitations of opportunities presented um, in uh, perhaps destabilized states. Alternatively, looting may be motivated by the needs uh, to raise funds for materiel. And the shadowy world of the antiquities trades makes accurate figures difficult to obtain, but the FBI has estimated the annual traffic in antiquities to be around two billion US dollars but some believe this to be much, much higher, equaling perhaps the illegal trade in weapons or drugs, estimated in the region of 43 billion in 2011. So it's been shown that at least some uh, illegally obtained material is traded through long established auction houses and perhaps a greater amount through um, private respected dealers um, from whom many museums acquire pieces for their collections. Now, of course, Cambodia um, has suffered many depredations since the mid-19th century. Um, much of uh, Cambodia's uh, heritage was removed to uh, France or, and other European countries for display in their museums. Even within the famed Angkor Park, which we've heard much about today, which receives now over two million visitors a year, heritage is not necessarily safe. This is a photograph taken at one of the most visited temples of Preah Khan. There is another temple called Preah Khan in Cambodia, which is more remote, um, and these images were taken there. Um, the, the looters that um, attacked Preah Khan at Kampong Sphai were, were uh, you can clearly see, very inexpert at their jobs. But they were well protected, probably by powerful officials, possibly military leaders. So this damage was done in the late 1990s. We saw some beautiful images um, of the uh, stream beds of Cabal Spian north of Angkor. And um, we heard about how the water passes over the lingas that you can see in the bottom image of this picture to bring um, sacred water down into the city. And the beautiful image of uh, Vishnu um, contemplating on the, uh, the eternal oceans there. But in 2004, thieves targeted this image of Vishnu on the cosmic ocean. And unfortunately, this was the result. Um, now, this has actually been repaired very well by uh, Artisans d'Angkor, so it's almost um, 
uh, difficult to tell that it was looted, but it was a shocking event at the time. So this has been going on for quite some time, the destruction and targeting of temples. Um, but more recently, um, beginning around the year 2000, um, there was an upsurge in looting of prehistoric sites. Um, and this really began with the discovery of an Iron Age site called um, Pum Snai that's located in northwest Cambodia. And these images were taken around that time of the villagers um, who were uh, engaged by an NGO to build a road and subsequently found um, uh, Iron Age burials. And once the news got out of the wealth that was contained in these burials, many, many, many sites began to be targeted by the local population. Um, the industry really is of an unprecedented scale, and really, at the present rate, one could argue that there will not uh, be an undisturbed site left in the future. In this photograph, thousands of people showed up to a site just to the south of Phnom Penh and completely looted and destroyed an Iron Age village. Much of the um, booty or loot that is recovered, of course, enters the international market. Um, you can see this is a bronze uh, Iron Age piece, probably from northwest Cambodia. I took this photograph in a Bangkok um, market, a high-end uh, market, I should add. Um, but you can see that there is a, an incredible degree of, uh, of skill. Martin, you'd be interested in that, uh, given your, your current research. So, of course, the, the goods get um, uh, entered into the international markets, but those things that don't have value are left behind. Um, this is an astounding pile of human bone that was collected from looters' pits in Odar Mienche in northwestern Cambodia. And a site that I worked on, um, this is from the site of Pum Sopi. This is a, a pile of human prehistoric remains that's over three meters in height. Um, so the, it gives you a kind of an insight into the scale of the destruction and what we're losing in terms of archaeological understanding of the rise of Angkor in the Iron Age period. So it's rather uh, shocking and alarming for me who's interested in this particular uh, time period and the developments that took place then. We've seen this image before. Um, as I said, the temples of Cambodia have long been under threat, um, but there have been some interesting developments that I'm sure everyone's quite familiar with. Back in 2011, Heritage Watch was alerted um, to an amazing discovery at Coquer, the feet of two statues. And uh, the colleague of mine who had made this discovery believed that they matched statues that were held at the Norton Simon Museum and another that was um, currently being auctioned by um, Sotheby's, or put up for sale, rather, by Sotheby's. So these two statues um, depict uh, Durodana and Bhima engaged in uh, combat in a, a famous scene from the uh, Hindu epic, the Mahabharata. And at Kokher, as you can see in the bottom Im image there, um, they were surrounded by seated attendants. So all of these are now missing, of course, from the site of Kokher. After a very long battle, uh, Dorodana was actually surrendered by Sotheby's, and much of the legal effort was driven by the young woman in the photograph here, Tess Davis, who is a former deputy director of Heritage Watch. Um, the Norton Simon Museum similarly, um, which held the Bema statue, saw the writing on the wall, and both statues were returned to Cambodia in 2014. So these are obviously major achievements and have um, ramifications for the return of looted art elsewhere in the world. So with this background, I'll, I'll turn to the topic of um, today's uh, discussion, um, the efforts to slow heritage destruction in Cambodia at the grassroots level. And I'll, I'll just cover some of the humble efforts made by um, Heritage Watch. So this is a, a nonprofit organization that's registered in the United States, founded to protect Cambodia's um, archaeological resources. And this organization was established um, really in reaction to this incredible fluorescence of uh, heritage destruction in northwest Cambodia that uh, eventually spread nationally. And uh, since its founding in 2003, we have implemented um, a number of different projects. So since the antiquities trade uh, largely survives on ignorance um, uh, by those who loot and those who buy uh, antiquities, 
we felt that education was a vital effort. So with generous funding from the United States State Department, um, Heritage Watch launched a national public awareness campaign in 2004. So we used radio and television ads. Um, we dis distributed uh, educational comic books that you can see, Wrath of the Phantom Army. Of course, it was in Khmer when we distributed it. Um, and uh, children's books. Um, nationwide. And we also began a database of looting events, um, going through the press clippings, etc. We established a hotline that people could phone to report um, cases of looting as well. A little later in 2006, we initiated a program that was called the Heritage Friendly Tourism Program that was designed to encourage local businesses um, and tourists to become aware of the value of um, heritage. So businesses in Cambodia that supported heritage or supported responsible tourism, development projects, that sort of thing, businesses that were doing good in the community essentially were certified as either gold or silver heritage friendly businesses. So we wanted to identify these uh, positive businesses and encourage other businesses to become more socially responsible and work to preserve Cambodia's heritage and work to promote Cambodian culture. So we had a very large um, campaign with t-shirts uh, and tourists and locals were urged to patronize these businesses that were doing positive things. So that was promoted um, through a media campaign with uh, street signs, uh, you know, lamp hangings and um, that, those sorts of things. We also developed a, um, a, a TV ad for international consumption. Welcome to Cambodia home of world heritage, ancient wonders, sandy shores, smiling faces. 2007 is the year of heritage-friendly tourism, a campaign celebrating Cambodia's diversity and vibrancy. Heritage-friendly businesses are proud to support the arts, culture, heritage, and development. Make a difference during your visit and help preserve Cambodia's heritage. Support heritage-friendly businesses. Look for the logo. So we also um, launched a magazine in that same year. So it was a busy year for us uh, then. Um, this was a magazine called Touchstone that was again sort of integrated into this heritage friendly um, uh, tourism campaign, promoting arts, culture, and archeology. span uh, And also a big um, a message was responsible tourism um, and also in trying to get people to stay a little bit longer. Um, but really the, the grassroots problem still continues to exist in Cambodia and we have over the years um, initiated a number of village uh, training sessions and rescue excavations. So we have hosted regular village workshops aimed at educating the local uh, and rural communities about the importance of protecting their cultural um, and local heritage. And we also work closely with uh, students from the Royal University of Fine Arts in um, excavating uh, uh, sites archaeologically, but we targeted ones that had been looted. So over 600 people have uh, um, attended our training sessions, and uh, a great majority of those report uh, a greater understanding of the need to conserve heritage. Um, the photograph there is of interest because it's taken from uh, obviously an aerial photograph, but all of those little holes are looters' pits. So you get an idea of the scale of that um, problem in prehistoric looting from that photograph. So another long-term goal of Heritage Watch is to address the main cause of looting, which we feel really is poverty. And as Cambodia's temples are one of the most important economic resources, um, as they are an impetus behind the country's growing tourism industry. And we feel that if they're properly developed, the industry of tourism can be a sustainable means of bettering the lives of Cambodian people and protecting their heritage. So we're very much interested in informing local people about the heritage resources they live with and encouraging the development of a tourist industry that is sound yet profitable. So with those um, goals in mind, um, we launched a project at Coquer, and this is the site of course where those famous statues um, uh, were uh, stolen from back in the 70s. Um, so uh, this is again a fairly remote site, but it has a lot of potential in terms of tourism um, to develop a, a sustainable income for the people who live there. Um, 
So in June 2007 through December 2008, we implemented a project aimed at reducing poverty um, at, at Coquer um, and the surrounding villages. So the first stage in the project was um, to undertake an assessment of what needed to be done, the training needs and the local level of poverty in the target site. So the majority of the population at Coquer we found um, survived on subsistence farming, um, and they did some hunting and gathering. So 85% of them were uh, um, living on less than a US a, a dollar a day, um, and 95% of the village was actually illiterate. So there were some considerable challenges. Many of the local people were actually former Khmer Rouge soldiers and had been quite isolated. Um, so Cambodia, of course, uh, had enjoyed peace and physical security since the 1990s, but the village chief at Coquer said um, reintegration there only occurred in the year um, 2000. There was also um, part of me, substantial problems in uh, Coquer with alcohol abuse and um, uh, family violence. So there, it was a challenging environment to, to begin to work in. So these issues um, presented a fairly serious uh, impediment in establishing successful business models around heritage tourism at the village level. And also, these were compounded by a lack of understanding about heritage, especially um, an understanding of the local responsibility for um, protection um, and preservation. So they, people often felt that looting was an issue that was up to the authorities, and they didn't like to take any local responsibility. Um, for, for that. So what we ended up doing was to conduct a, a heritage uh, awareness meetings as we had done elsewhere in Cambodia and then we um, decided that we would form a community heritage patrol so I like to call them CHIPS. I don't know if that actually ever aired in uh, Australia but uh, certainly it's, a, it's very, very funny in North America. Um, but we, our project was also um, interested in uh, improving the livelihoods of people living around the temples, um, using tourism by providing uh, training in Khmer literacy. We provided training in English, um, English uh, skills. We provided training in tourist guiding, small business management. We set up ox cart tours, um, so we modified ox carts that could hold people and took uh, tours around the site. Um, we also worked in product development uh, and merchandising, as well as beekeeping and ceramic um, production. We also established a daycare center at Coquer so that um, the village women could participate in all of these training activities. So we had ended up having 25 adults in our literacy classes who uh, study for about four hours a day. Um, and the, the post-project reports um, reported that they really did enjoy that training and um, substantial improvements were observed. We had 11 people um, who identified small business concepts um, and we helped them to create tourism-based revenue streams through the workshops, things like beekeeping um, and um, uh, uh, palm candy manufacturer. So our post-project surveys um, uh, indicated that most of the participants felt more committed to heritage preservation um, and understood the benefits of the temples that they lived amongst. Um, many became uh, involved uh, in, the, in the project and, and overcame their shyness. There was a real change in the, in the social dynamic in the village. Um, and also we noted that business activity at Coquer um, actually expanded during the, the time of the project. But most importantly, there's a, a better, though very still uh, a basic awareness of market forces relating to tourism at that site. So um, I think that our efforts there were instrumental in encouraging education at Coquer. More children began to attend school after our project um, had finished. Um, and we were really pleased to get a lot of positive press. We had a lot of national and international um, press as well as local press uh, covering the project. And as a result, um, the issue of uh, preservation of the Coquer Temple uh, Complex, um, I think the, uh, the importance of wider heritage protection and the positive impacts of uh, heritage tourism and sustainability um, began to be widely um, accepted. Later on, after the Coquer project, we received a grant in 2009 from the um, Archaeological Institute of America to support 
the Bante Chmar Heritage Production Project. So we, we took our knowledge from Koker and moved to the northwest of Cambodia with the goal of increasing local interest in preservation around that site. So what we wanted to do was to ensure the local community was prepared um, and properly trained um, to manage and implement sustainable uh, heritage tourism practices. So one of the project goals was to see that the benefits of tourist development um, filtered back into the local community um, and was distributed appropriately amongst community stakeholders. So the situation at Bante Chmar was much more favorable. They were a very engaged um, uh, community. They were really interested, self-motivated in fact, and they had already set up a community-based um, tourism operation there. So we were really happy to work with them and we again um, provided English language training and guide training um, and heritage protection workshops. And we managed to convince the Ministry of Culture to recognize the guide training and they were awarded official um, uh, ministry guide uh, certificates at the end of that. Um, so the, the members of the uh, CBT um, really became stewards and protectors of the site of Bante Chmar. So as I say, they were trained as professional guides and they were actively doing guided tours um, and meeting other tourist um, needs. Um, we were also acutely aware, because this is an area that is really heavily looted with a lot of prehistoric sites around it, not only the Temple of Bante Chmar. So we did a lot of public education in local communities about the importance of protecting cultural heritage around the site. And of course, the lessons that we learned at Coquer were heeded very closely and applied at Bante Chamar. So in terms of um, impact of projects, I think through our advocacy and efforts at raising awareness of the seriousness of the problem of uh, heritage destruction in Cambodia, the patrimony um, police have uh, been made a national force, which is really good news. Um, and also UNESCO, um, I well, I know for a fact, used the Co-Care project as a model for a multi-million dollar intangible cultural heritage project. So there has been some positive uh, effects um, from a very small organization's um, efforts in Cambodia. Also, um, Heritage Watch was closely involved with the repatriation of artifacts illegally imported to Australia, um, and this resulted in a bilateral agreement on antiquities between Cambodia and Australia. And I noticed actually um, that uh, these bangles were in the photograph of the, uh, the lab um, in Phnom Penh, I think. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'll just turn now to our current project. Our current project is called Heritage for Kids, and it's designed to bring heritage education to the younger generation uh, in Cambodia. So we're targeting primary and secondary school children. And once again, we have decided to work uh, around um, Bante Chamar. So in 2015, we launched a Kickstarter and we were successful in raising $10,000 um, to begin primary and school, secondary school um, education programs um, in Bante Chamar. Um, so the, the school is very close to the temple. Um, and of course, this is, we've already seen that this is quite um, badly looted temple. I think I've got this photograph here showing some of the destruction. This photograph was taken um, at Bante Chmar, and in 2001, looters removed about an eight meter section of the wall and uh, shipped it to Thailand. One part was intercepted and is now at the National Museum in Phnom Penh. So the first phase of our Heritage for Kids um, project um, involved uh, 16 high school students and 30 um, grade five students. And we covered a range of topics, uh, natural heritage, cultural heritage, tangible and intangible heritage. And we also talked about preservation, conservation, uh, and management. Of course, we used our um, comic books and our children's books um, again in this uh, project to raise awareness. Also, we had trips to the local museums incorporated to highlight the importance of prehistoric um, heritage. So Heritage Watch um, uh, sponsored the display of material from a, a prehistoric site called Pum Sopi that I excavated um, in 2009. And um, we uh, have all of the artifacts that we excavated there on display in the local, um, local museum. 
So this program um, incorporated a number of visits to Bante Chamar Temple to get the kids really interested and excited by it, um, and a range of activities that were um, useful in reinforcing the importance of heritage to the local community. And I have to say we've had really great support from the provincial and local authorities in Cambodia. Um, so Heritage for Kids is now in its third phase, um, and we're, we've conducted training with three groups of middle and junior school students. So the teachers are really closely involved and the materials that are uh, used are passed on to them, including a teaching plan for this program, comic books, children's books, um, and coloring books. And um, it is always hard to find funds, so if any of you have deep pockets, we're always welcome to uh, donations. Um, but I just want to take this opportunity to thank you very much for your attention, but also to thank the many, many volunteers who have been involved with Heritage Watch and have made um, all of the work that we've done possible. The pass boards and the serving boards, uh, uh, the governors including Kong Birak, the director of the National Museum, um, Bong Savat, Hang Po, Im Sokreti, Prak Sonarat, Joyce Clark, Daryl Collins, and our country director, um, on Mononita. So I appreciate your attention. Thank you.